Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever it is, wherever and whenever you are. Welcome to the Anti-Fragile Entrepreneur Daily Mindset Podcast. I am your host, Seth Cherpak, a.k.a. The Red Neo, the world's premier expert on AI-driven entrepreneurship. Humble and proud of it. Here to solve all your marketing mysteries, guide you on your journey to the mountaintop of entrepreneurial freedom, and bust out with the occasional 3 a.m. beer conversation. You know, a weak leader will eventually choose compliance over competence. A weak leader will eventually choose compliance over competence. Why am I talking about this? Because whether you're working for somebody else or leading your own vision or organization, it's important to understand this because there is a transition that happens. If a person doesn't grow emotionally and spiritually, into the leader that they are supposed to be, they will eventually take this path where they will choose compliance over competence. In other words, they will hire people to work for them or recruit people to support their vision, not who are competent, but who are compliant. Now, compliant people tend to be much less competent. In fact, that's usually why they have to become compliant because they have to have some way to sell themselves into an organization to get a job or to get a role because they lack the competence to compete for that role. They have to sell themselves in terms of their willingness to comply with the demands of the person who is managing them or leading that organization. Meanwhile, competent people tend to be a little bit more interesting to work with. Competent people will push back on you. A competent person will understand their roles and responsibilities and their skill set better than you. They should if you're making smart hiring decisions. And part of being a leader is knowing when to allow a competent person to lead in their area of expertise. You see, a weak leader is always going to have to be in charge, always going to have to pull the I'm the boss card, the I'm the owner card, the I'm the CEO card, the I'm the pastor card. And when a competent person pushes back on a weak leader, a leader with a frail ego, a leader who does not understand that being a good leader means knowing when to let the right person lead. When a competent person pushes back on them, it turns into a conflict because the leader can't accept the fact that someone who works for them knows better than them how to do their role. This is actually the wise way to build an organization. But a weak leader, they won't be able to admit when they're wrong. They won't be able to deal with the I told you so's when they tell the person to do it their way instead of the competent way and they end up crashing the ship against the rocks and the competent person comes back and says, this is why we should have done it my way in the beginning. And what happens is, Even if the leader is originally surrounded by competent people, in time, their inability to deal with this pushback from the people who work for them will cause them to hire compliant people. And at first, it may appear that this is a good choice because compliance does help you move faster in the beginning. But long term, you don't create nearly as much value and it leads to a culture of codependency and mediocrity and defaulting to the lowest common denominator. And more importantly, competent people and compliant people do not get along. Competent people resent people who have earned their positions by kissing ass and by being compliant. And there begins to be this conflict. And eventually the competent people get tired of carrying the compliant people or dealing with all the incompetence that comes about as a result of being surrounded by incompetent people. And more importantly, they usually get tired of dealing with the micromanaging and the I'm the CEO and the I'm the owner and the I'm the boss attitude of the leader and the competent people leave and the organization becomes a ghost of what it was. The church becomes a ghost of what it was. The vision becomes a cult-like caricature of what it once was. If you're a leader and you're reaching this point where you're beginning to get this pushback from the people who work for you, from the people who are supporting your vision, step back, check your ego. Understand that being a real leader means knowing when 
to let the right person lead.